Hi, this is Chenda at Bach Library. Hi, I'm Denea from the Billie Jean King Main Library. Welcome to Picture This, our monthly conversation sharing great books from our picture book collection collections airing the second Wednesday of every month. Denea, what do you have to share this session? Ooh, okay, so my first two books are about libraries, but these are very different kind of libraries that you see, not just the ones that you see here. So this is my first book. It's the Library Bus. Um, it's by Barim Rahman, um, and this takes place in Afghanistan. Um, it's a book about a young girl who is a first day. She's helping her mother out at the library bus. So this, they go around and they go to different, um, different, I guess, areas. And then they help girls and they teach them how to read, write, and to even speak in English. Um, and so the little, the young girl, the, she's really nervous because all of these kids, they can read, write, and she's not there yet. She's going to actually start school um next year but she's really excited to help her mother and it showed her how like eager these young girls were to learn um are ready to read they were wanting to read and they even go to um the unhcr so this is actually another the camp where they go to to even bring some books to the kids and specifically to the girls so and um the author who actually wrote this was born in Afghanistan, and he was wrote this book to show the strength of uh, the children, specifically Afghanistan girls, and he focused on their pursuit of education. Um, and many of these um, library buses are like they're just run by women who really just um, are making an effort and wanting to um, go around and to help educate young young women. So I really thought this book was good and you know, it's, it's worth a read because it shows how different, um, different countries, because um, maybe they don't have libraries to go to in some parts of the world. So we have to go to them. And, and so I thought this was really good. My other one is actually a Spanish book. Um, we have this as a Spanish book in our collection right now, but in the future, we will be getting the English format for this. So the title is Rescantado Palabras, Jose Alberto Gutierrez y la Biblioteca que Creo. Hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> but and then this is written by um, Angela Burke Kunkel. So in English, this means digging for words, Jose Alberto Gutierrez, and the library he built. Um, so this is a picture book based on the life of Jose Alberto Gutierrez. And it's an, he's a man from Bogota, Colombia. And he fell in love with books while um, after reading Anna Karenia. Karenia. <laughs> and um, he was a garbage collector, so he would collect books. Um, around town and he would make his own library collection at home. So every Saturday, young kids can go to his house and um, read books. So, so he was actually, so this is another way that we can have like kids, uh, like, you know, bring books to communities and stuff. So I thought this was a really good book. And also what I loved because I couldn't, I'm, Unfortunately, I cannot read Spanish, but the illustrations help, like, help tell me the story. So sometimes, even if you can't read it, that's why we love illustrations because illustrations also tell us another, like, a story without words. And um, that's what I love about that. So, what about you, Chenda? Do you have a couple books for me? I love the book that promotes literature and reading and literacy. Because yeah. um, March, since March is the um, beginning of um, a Women History Month, I wanted to feature the series that all um, encourage and um, feature women um, to challenge the system and persist. So it's written by Chelsea Clinton, um, illustrated by Alexandra Bolger. Um, she persisted. Um, there's three of them. Um, this is 13 American women who changed the world. 
she persisted in sports, it's American Olympians who changed the game, like they challenged the game. And then 13 women who changed history. So around, this is around the world. So it featured, um, you know, the most interesting one that I um, didn't realize was that um, J.K. Rowling, Rowling um, you know, the author of Harry Potter, when she wanted to be a writer, but she didn't, she can, after university, she just spent years working on Harry Potter, working full time. But many publishers rejected her first book, but she persisted. And the publisher even asked her to change her name to JK because Joanne sounded, you know, um, too female. So they want JK to, so it sounded less female. And her name's Joanne. She didn't have a middle name, so the K stands for her mother, um, her grandmother's middle name, Catherine. So she's now sold more than 40, uh, 400 million books. So I just want to sh just to show the challenge that women still continue to face even in today's age. And then the author of your book, Library Bus, reminds me of Malala because she wanted to get an education and even though people in her native Pakistan thought girls shouldn't go to school. And she was threatened many times, but she persisted in writing about her dreams for herself and girls everywhere. And she was even shocked um, be because for standing up, you know, um, to that, for the um, standing up um, to, for girls to have rights to go to school. So she herself continued to go to school today. So it's a really wonderful book because you have to speak up, rise up, dream big, because these women did that and more. They persisted and so should you. And then the, um, the other one that I wanted to share is about Mae Jemison, astronaut, um, May Among the Stars. This is a fictionalized picture book written by Rhoda Ahmed. So it's just about, it just shows what a little dreamer, um, May Jemison, she grew up wanting to be an astronaut, but she got discouraged by a teacher who maybe just didn't want her to be disappointed and told her maybe she should be a nurse instead. And May had a hard time. So she didn't want to be a nurse. She wanted to be an astronaut. She was very disappointed, but so she decided to just study, um, you know, to, and she, she became a doctor instead. She graduated from high school at 17, became a doctor, but she always held on to her dream. And she finally did enter um, to a NASA space program. And she did become an astronaut because her mom always said, if you can dream it, right here, let me find a quote. If you can dream it and you can believe in it, and if you work hard, anything is possible. So that's just a wonderful story to follow your dreams despite people telling you how difficult or hard it can be. And then the, la the last two book I have for Women's History Month is Shaking Things Up. Just 14 Young Women Who Changed the World by Susan Hood. And this one is really awesome. It also feature, it's just a one page informational one with fact and um, um, and at the bottom of um, the biography and then a illustrated page features like Maya Lin. A few of the um, biography that's listed here, the, um, they're still alive and there's Malala again. And it's a really an awesome book to just share and start talking about you know, how things have to change and we have to fight for it by shaking things up. Because if you write this one, if we don't shake things up or speak up or fight, we will never be able to like ride a bike. Born to Ride, a story about bicycle face, story by Larissa Tulley. Um, it's about women not being told they can't ride a bike, like they can't vote. Oh, this one takes place in 1896 and girls and women live by a long list of things they were told not told not to do. They were not to vote, for example, that was against the law. They were also told not to wear pants or ride a bicycle because they think that women are so fragile and weak that they were 
their face would freeze and their jaws will close up forever from straining, maybe forever. But Belinda didn't believe that and she borrowed her brother's pants and she tried, she kept falling down and she fell and fell again and again and again, but she persisted. And guess what? Her face did not freeze. <laughs> her jaws did not lock up. And she rode. And to this day, that's why we're still riding bikes. This book is wonderful to just start the conversation about misconception, about what women's role or um, abilities are. And there's some historical um, notes about bicycle face <laughs> and from bicycle to vote about women's suffrage. And so what do you, that's pretty much for March his, Women's History Month. What do you have? Well, I have a couple more that will actually ride on your stories, which um, and with the persistence and, um, and change the misconceptions, I have our vice president, it's Kamala Harris. So this is a story about her, but we also have um, a young girl that comes home and she's not happy because her um, at school, the teacher was asking um, all the students what they wanted to be. And this young girl, her name is Eve, and she's telling her mother that she, when she, the teacher called upon her and asked her what she wants to be, she said she wanted to be a president. And another student said to her, girls can't be president. And so the mother told her, well, he's wrong because we have our vice president, a woman vice president. And, and the mother talks, actually is telling Eve a story, not a story, but was telling her about the life of Kamala Harris, about where she began um, and also like where she came from. She like, you can see in the map, she's from India to Jamaica and then to United States. And also I think she even went to Canada so moved to Canada. So there's a lot of like a lot of history in here about Kamala. So um, it's not a very and the font is very small. So this is something that maybe a parent and a child or even an older reader can do. Um, but I think there's one excerpt that I really liked about this. Um, and it's about where Kamala, she goes off to school and she was graduating law school and that meant she would have to pass the bar and um, when she took the test she didn't pass it the first time and she it actually taught Kamala something new which is failure and it's the toughest teacher but it can also be the best because it makes you dig down deeper and try harder and from what we got today, like learned literally from Chenda's books and here is, you know, these women or children, they were persisting and they didn't stop because they failed. It actually pushed them to become better at what they want to be and, and look at what happened. We, you know, she is here. <laughs> and it's cool because also in the back, um, it also, gives you a timeline of everything that's happened in Kamala's life. So um, I thought this is a great book and hopefully we'll have many more and maybe even some a woman president. So hopefully in the future we can look forward to that. And my last one is Speak Up. Um, so this book is written by Miranda Paul and there's this in this book there's different ways that children can speak up about certain things. Um, and it's really sweet. I thought this was really good because it gives kids an idea of like when they should speak up and um, and in situations like say, for example, this one, there's a young boy standing up and he's, you know, they're eating lunch and it says share a moment or speak up, share a moment, kindness goes a long way. So it's um, not only just to speak up when something's wrong, but you also want to speak up to be kind, um, to include people. Um, even when you make a mistake, it's okay to speak up to say you're sorry. Um, or even when you have a special day or if you've given something neat, you speak up and say thank you. Or, you know, I just want to talk about it. Or even, yeah, you speak up to give your thanks. 
you know, everybody loves saying thank you and and all that stuff too. And um, and also even for nature, speak up, you rally to others, and nature needs your mindful voices. So you got to keep our earth clean and happy. And also in the back, there's always great stuff in the back of books. So don't ever think a book's ever ending. So we also have um, an excerpt for real kids who spoke up. So you can actually read real life stories of children who spoke up and um, made a change. And also, um, there's also an excerpt for when you should speak up. And, um, and if you're still finding your voice. So there's also other ways that you can speak up without saying a word. And, and I thought that was really great because there's a lot of people that, you know, they're maybe shy or nervous or uncomfortable speaking out loud. So um, having that option of like speaking up in ways that make you feel comfortable and you're still helping is also a good thing to do. And you, Chanda? I really like that one. I like that <laughs> you speak up, but you can also, um, if you take action, yes. that, that um, shows that, you know, you take action following your words, or you don't even have to say a word, <laughs> right? right? It's really important. And then um, my two, uh, my last, um, my few books, um, this one, it's When Winter Comes, Discovering Wildlife in Our Snowy Woods, Ami M. Bessonet, and uh, illustrated by Aaron Horrigan. It's a really wonderful book. When you think about Texas and their um, um, blizzard or their blackout and snow and stuff like that, you wonder how can anything, when winter comes, when it's so cold and freezing outside, is there anything going on? These, this family is having fun because they're playing in the snow, but unbeknownst to them in the fallen log, the duck behind, you know, right here. Oh, there's toads and caterpillars, snails, slugs. They're hibernating mosquitoes and ladybugs. So animals that hibernate. And then there's animals that are still active, but they're underneath their tunnel below the snow. Look at them eating um, seeds. And there's a wonderful two layer picture right here is where the people are, um, they're snow fishing. They're fishing through the frozen lake, but there's still animal underneath the lake. And even turtle who are hibernating are going to sleep at the bury themselves at the bottom of the um, the um, in the mud. And you remember, there's like um, people are um, skiing on the snow and everything. But birds who do not fly south also has to find food and still live in the trees in the snow. And we have our common hibernators right here. And then there's also animals that stay active. They're hunters and then they'll prey. They have to stay hidden. Isn't that wonderful? So even though it, when winter comes, um, there's still wild and wonderful wintry world out there with the animals that because the wood are not empty. They're very much alive during the winter. So it's a really wonderful book to share and learn about winter animals. And then I have two books by the same author. It's a field trip to the ocean deep and field trip to the ocean by John Hare. And it's a full page wordless book. So it just you have to use your um, um, visual as you look at the pictures think of in your head what story would you write to go with this the title can give you an idea of what the book is about field trip to the and then you see the class wouldn't it be wonderful if someday we can take field trip to the ocean and field trip to the moon in our suit but guess what somebody's left behind and you can see what the person is doing. What would you write? What words would you use to describe? And then in each book, they have a surprise um, encounter with the creature that live on the moon and in the bottom of the ocean. And this child is has a box of crayon and a sketchbook. And then in the book to the ocean, they have a, a water underwater camera so they can take pictures. But not to worry because the teacher realized someone was left behind and they come back. 
and give them a great, wonderful hug and they can tell their story and what they saw when they were at the, on their field trip and they were by themselves. It's a wonderful full page illustration wordless book that you can share um, if you're building up vocabularies and using your words. Okay, Danae, what do you have? Okay, this is my last, my, for real, my last book. <laughs> and it's a book that Chenda chose as well. So whenever you see us put, picking up the same book, it's because we were thinking about it at the same time. <laughs> and we wanted to show it off. So we both have different views on uh, what we really liked about this book. And so the title is Hooray for Helpers, First Responders, and More Heroes in Action by Mike Austin who has written a very beautiful book, very illustrated and simple text, which is, which is really great because you have um, literally him telling, describing uh, the first responder or heroes in such an easy way. And not only that, we're, um, there's different um, scenarios that you're gonna see them in. And he's also, um, there's, He's described all of the terms that you, you would use if you see like um, the stuff over there, like if you, in that situation. So at least you know what um, it is called. Um, so I really loved it. And the illustrations are really great. And it's, it's like so colorful and you get to learn more, not just like police or, you know, the firefighters or EMTs. There's way more people. There's so many more heroes out there. And this book really describes it. And uh, what about you, Chanda? What did you like about this book? I love how um, it's really, we're hearing a lot more of the words being used, like, um, you know, with the out, um, blackout in Dallas, Texas, you have, you talk about electrician going to work and chainsaw being used and cranes. And then I love how everything, like you said, is identified. So we build vocabularies. But I also like um, the first responder that they show we have a picture showing the National Guard helping out because in LA, we have the National Guard coming out to help with the vaccination. That's pretty okay. awesome. And they give out blankets and volunteer aid worker. I just love the fact that everything um, is identified. So um, we're building rich vocabulary and they keep everyone. And then and for everything you do, thank you first responder because they're re um, you know, there are heroes. And at the end of the book, of course, there's stuff you can do. This one is um, Anthony, a New York firefighter. Um, but if you go to um, ready.gov slash kit, um, kids for more information, activities, and games, you can create your own supply list. And in case um, you have to call 911, what you can have written down for the child, or just practice. Um, saying your family's name, your home address, and um, all that stuff so that, um, you know, you're all ready to go. So that's a really wonderful book to just share and, um, you know, learn more about first responders. They're also animals included too. They're first responders too. And then to follow that up, I have a funny one, Emergency M Monster Squad by Dave Horowitz. This is a, this is a really funny one because the responders are, uh, it's a mon uh, it, he's an EMT, look at him. His name is, this is Sally and this is Gus who rides in the monster squad bus. And look at that. You wouldn't want your paramedic to show up like him, right? <laughs> but this paramedic, they really have a portable oxygen tank, cardiac monitor and defibrillator first, but you know what they tell you, please don't say quiet around an ambulance crew, because if you do, once you say quiet, you know what comes next, next emergency call for a pain in the chest. So every time you're near an ambulance, don't say quiet, because that will create an emergency call to come in. But I love the book and it, the book ends really cute funny illustration but i love how the book um ends with the vocab of a glossary so the kids can have fun um pronouncing and um, identifying what all the different parts are it's really cool and then to finish off our day i'm so excited heroes wears mask elmo's 
super adventure. You know, we're hoping school will be open again and libraries and everything else. Once everyone get vaccinated, we hope. But Elmo is super excited, but he's also super nervous. So he practiced, um, he takes a deep breath, he put his hand on his belly, take a deep breath through his nose. And he lets it out through his mouth just to feel better. You might have to do it a couple of times and you can even count to five. After you have his breakfast and everything, he has everything in his backpack. And then Elmo's remember to try on the mask before he goes to school so that he's all ready because he doesn't have to wear the mask at, at home. He just does it when he goes out and it has to fit right. And then look at that. When he gets nervous, he put his hand on his belly again and breathe through his nose and let it out through his mouth. Now he's ready to go. And on the ride to the bus, he remembers he can give mommy and daddy and family members um, a hug and kiss, but he have to wave to your friends. You can't hug or kiss them yet. So he does that, he practices his wave, and then he sees his friend at school. And so he, he's been practicing. So he just wave from a distance and they sit a little bit far apart as much as they can and has a very fun day at school. And Elmo's know when you go outside, he knows to wash his hands when he get, gets back inside. And there he goes. So he meets mommy at school and he can't wait to tell her everything. And I hope we all get to go back to school. You guys get to go back to school soon. And at the end, there's tip, tips for grownups, do's and don'ts for wearing super face mask. And you help, under, help children understand why it's important to wear mask and practice feeling comfortable wearing them. Cause you do need to take a little bit of practice and the do's and don'ts are listed and how to wash your hands. Step one, wet your hand with water. Step two, you soap and scrub your hands together for 20 seconds or the ABC song twice. Rinse your hand with water and then dry your hand with a, with a clean towel. And there's so it's a wonderful book to share to get ready for going back to school. All right, Danea. So if you're interested in any of the books that we've mentioned today, type picture this 0321 in the search bar in our catalog and the list of books will appear. So this is Chenda, Ms. Chenda from Bach Library. And I'm Danea from the Billy Jean King Lane Library. Thank you for joining us for Picture This. Yay. Bye. We'll see you next time. Yay.